quarterfinal, the high stretch world of Vertigo. The hard knock school of Powerball. The hot shot sharpshooting danger zone. Plus, the heavy hand of Gauntlet. But before the action comes the chat and your host, Jeremy Guscott and Ulrika Johnson. to our quarterfinals. Now, our four quarterfinalists will be keeping half an eye on the gladiators and half an eye on our prizes. And it's little wonder because this year, our winners will each receive £1,000. <laughs> Plus, they'll each drive away in one of those fabulous four-wheel drive utility trucks not yet seen in the UK. <laughs> It's a lot of hard work for the people that come second, so our runners-up won't be going away empty-handed. They will also receive £1,000, plus we will jet them off to the Atlantis Resort on Paradise Island in the Bahamas. So let's meet our quarter-finalists. Tonight they are Judith Huntington... ..and Maria Ward. Those darn sheep. I think some have escaped. There's not quite as many. No, there isn't. Maybe it was because they set off so early they didn't have time to get them all in. No, maybe not. You have to remind everyone at home what it is you do and where you're from. I'm a mortgage specialist for a high street bank. And I also, we have a farm at home and my mother. Ooh, because I can see a little girl out there. How was, she, how was she after the first, when you went through your heats? Was she very excited? And she cried. Did she? I think everybody else, everybody else cried as well. Now, you must be very, very excited to get through to the quarterfinals. Do you think that things are taking a different turn now? Things are getting a little bit more serious? You've got to take it all in your stride, because this is very, very different from anything you've ever done before. It's difficult to describe exactly what the feeling is. You've just got to go for it. Well, listen, we'll be looking out for you. The very best of luck. Let's hear it for Judith Huntington. <laughs> Maria, could you just remind us uh, what you do and where you're from? I'm originally from Romania. I live in London. Uh, and uh, I'm a lifeguard at Swiss Scottish Sports Centre in London. You have your supporters. How, where have you brought your supporters from? Um, most of them are from work. Uh, my husband's family, some Romanian friends. How much have you enjoyed the experience of Gladiators so far? So far, everything's been brilliant. The training, the um, contenders, the gladiators. I had a brilliant time. That was my best time in my life. Wow, the gladiators, <laughs> incredible. Um, what, what have you been doing to, to relax in between shows? Oh, I just had um, a few days off and then uh, I went back to work and um, I came back to win the show. To win the show. Let's hope your dreams come true. Let's give it up for Maria Wards. And now it's time to meet the guys tonight. They are Laverne Rich. And Neil Parsley. I'm fine, fine, cool, cool. Got to be back here again. And with your noisy lot over there as well. Are we going to have some noise from them tonight? Yeah. i got to say one thing, though. My family are always late, so at least they're here on time. <laughs> oh, that's a good start. Well, you were here on time I as well. I was here on time, I should say. Now, to more serious matters, how do you feel about being in the quarters? Oh, top, top banana. I'm really, really excited about it. Um, do you think you can go all the way? Oh, most definitely, definitely. i got the hot legs, i got the speedy hands, i got the speedy body. And the speedy mouth. Oh, well, you've said it. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we'll be looking out for you. The very best of luck. Let's hear it for Laverne Rich. <laughs> Neil, um, I believe uh, <laughs> if we can contain your supporters for 30 seconds. Ooh. You've got a message for your father. Yeah, just like it's my dad's birthday today, so happy birthday, Dad. Happy birthday, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> Just remind us, Neil, what you do and where you're from. I'm a professional rugby player, um, and I come from the Wirral. From the Wirral? <laughs> How's training been going in between shows? Yeah, training's going good. I'm getting plenty of stick as well, so, but, yeah, things are going good. Uh, who else have you brought along today? Oh, I've got the rugby team, everyone from the gym. have got mum, dad, 
Obviously, my girlfriend, Louise. You've got to give the girlfriend a mention, haven't you? Oh, I've got to get it in. Didn't Louise, Louise try to get on Gladiator as well, didn't she? Yeah, she got, she got through. She got right, right down. She's a reserve, unfortunately, so, uh, but she's going to get him next year. She will. Well, we might see Louise on next year's show. Let's give it up for Neil Parsley. Well, we met the girls and the guys, so let the quarterfinal begin. First off, it's Judy. And she's facing Fox. Judith Huntington. She beat Sue England for a place in this quarter-final. The weights and measures department, 62 kilos, which is 9 stone, 10 pounds, in case you haven't got a calculator handy. Whereas Fox is 67 kilos, which makes her nearly a stone heavier. We've five poles to span. First to pull the ring at the end is the winner, and they're up and climbing. And being a financial advisor, Judith will be used to the swings of the stock market, and she's no slouch on vertigo either. Last time out, she mullered Vogue to secure 10 points. Fox begins the swing at the top to force the stretch to pole two. Makes it look easy. And so does Judith. Fox using her greater weight to good advantage, working that pole hard onto pole three. And if Judith comes second, she'll earn a point for every pole completed. It's close, but Fox still has the edge at pole four. And Fox very much at home, perched at the top of the pole, extending her lead now. And Judith is going to have to push and pull out something special if she's going to win this. Final pole. Fast work from Judith, but the Fox has escaped the Huntington. Fox wins it hands down. Judith onto the ring and off the mark with four points for the poles. Fox hot over the arena, cool under pressure. Well, the Foxy lady done good. I certainly did. I love that game. It's brilliant. Amazing feeling when you're up there. Do you actually notice how far off the ground you are? You don't. You have time to think about it at the beginning, but when you're up there, you just go for it. It's tunnel vision just to get to that ring first. And I did. You're like an angel in the clouds. Let's give it up for Fox. Well, Judith, a little unlucky there. I mean, you're a little bit shorter than Fox. I was just wondering whether she had a slightly longer reach than you. I'm sure she did. I gave her best shot. She won me. Well, all's not lost. You picked up four points. Well done, Judy. <laughs> Next up on Vertigo, it's Maria. She's facing Siren. Weight's crucial in this event. Come and have a look at my stats, says Siren. How can we refuse? 70 kilos, which makes 11 stone. On the other set of poles, we have Maria Ward, and she'll be 55 kilos, which puts her at a two-stone, five-pound disadvantage. In their last high-tension encounter, Siren beat Maria to the end, but Maria scored three points. She'll be looking to better that right now. Maria will reach the pinnacle of her climbing pole, then start to make it work. Friend Matter full of encouragement. Will she make the stretch? Oh, just short, needed an extra inch of her fingers. Siren leans comfortably onto pole two, while Maria's lost her momentum and has got to get it going all over again. Maria onto pole two as Siren makes it to three. Siren big and powerful. Remember this action taking place at altitude of nearly 30 feet above the arena floor. Maria's husband John's on his feet. Maria makes it to pole three. Oh, but look at Siren. Onto her final perch. This will be a convincing win for Siren. Arm out for the ring pull. And that fires up the pyros. Siren says, how'd you like that? Long arm Siren works her pole with a minimum of effort before making the transfer to the winning ring. The heavier gladiator doesn't wait for the contender. Siren, you've got to be very pleased with that performance. Well, you can't tell feet, Jeremy. I mean, you know my track record, so, but yeah, I'm, I'm pretty pleased. I've got these long arms, you see, and I think that definitely helped me lean across, and Maria's quite little, so I was lucky. The arms did the trick. Let's give it up for Siren. Which was just too much for you on each occasion. Too much. I need long arms for that. Or the poles closer together would be nice. <laughs> yeah, please. Well, listen, not too bad. You picked up two points. Let's hear it from Maria. One down and four to go. Judith kicks off with four, Maria with two. Now we move into the men's event with Laverne. And he's going to be racing against. 
over to John Anderson. Contender! we've witnessed in the past, this is not Cobra's favourite event. He's defending a 100% always been beaten record on Vertigo. Laverne, on the other hand, defeated the legendary Hunter last time out, so the outcome of this won't be hard to predict. But against the odds, Cobra has an early lead onto pole two. Laverne follows him. Laverne, in case you were wondering earlier, is a swimming instructor from Wales. Cobra to pole three, and Laverne fails to make it. Needs a big one to get back on terms. Cobra comes across to pole four. Laverne still in his wake. It's all about the final pole. Cobra needs a big stretch. Oh, he's there. Laverne's with him. Cobra needs more swing. Here's Laverne's chance. It's so close, it's neck and neck. Oh, how do you call that one? What do you think at home? Well, it's obvious what they think. Well, Laverne, apparently at the end there, it was very difficult to tell who exactly was the winner of that contest. Going to have a look at the big screen and see the result, OK, in the replay. And there's the evidence. As they reach out, it's Laverne! What can I say? The boy is back! Let's hear it for the man! Next up, it's Neil! And he's facing Diesel! Neil remembers his heat with relish. For me, the best game was probably Vertigo, um, because I, I thought I'd lost it. And, you know, I took a gamble and it came off. Um, and that, that gave me such a big buzz when I came down because I, I think the crowd realised that I took a bit of a gamble and they were just going absolutely wild. So that was felt really good. Neil Parsley took 10 points from Cobra then, but now he's up against the Diesel, whose Vertigo record is a little more impressive than Cobra's when it comes to pole work. Diesel at the top of the upright, and Neil still climbing as Diesel starts the swing. Remember, if Neil comes second, he'll score a point for every pole he completes. Diesel onto pole two. Neil fails to make the grab. Diesel. Plenty of swing, makes the reach for pole three. He's there, completely dispensing with elegance. Neil's still stuck on pole two. Diesel may be good at this event, but it never looks like he's enjoying it. Pole four, one left between him and the winning ring. Neil on to pole four. Diesel leans into pole five. This is going to be a clear win for the Diesel. The supporters won't give up, and nor will Neil. Diesel hardly smooth in his actions, but emphatic with his victory. A good win for him. Neil's friend Brian, with his brother and sister Matty and Katie, could have done without that. So could Neil. How oh, you enjoyed that? Because I did. It's really good. I mean, I think Vertigo is built for a gladiator of your build. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Long arms, long legs. I'm laughing all the way. <laughs> all the way. Let's give it up for Diesel. Oh, Nilo. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. No. It was a close one. You had a little bit of trouble at the first pull. Yeah, one little mistake, and that cost me, really. So. Certainly did, but all, all's not lost. You picked up four points. Let's hear it for Nilo. Brian and Matty applauding the efforts after one event. Laverne's on ten, Neil's on four. <laughs> scoring with the blue balls, it's Maria! And scoring with the red balls, it's Judy! And they're facing our gladiators, Falcon and Rio! These are the glads. There are the sheep. And there's the Powerball pitch. That's all you need to know, really. Other than that, what's going through Maria's mind at the moment? Really looking forward for the Powerball. It's, the, it's my favourite game. And it's really fast. And I'm going to score lots of points. Maria has drawn Rio, who's intent on preventing her from scoring a lot of points, but a superb opening from Maria. Three points, centre basket, no messing. Is this a warning of things to come? Or well, maybe not. Judith, intercepted by Falcon, spins her down on the ball, out of play. Maria sprints to reload. Rio with the tackle, robs her of that blue ball. 
Falcon, a great powerball technician. Oh, superb tackle to deny Judith. Maria again. Rios decided her only chance of closing Maria down is to tackle early. Judith reloads, tries to dummy Falcon. Oh, but Falcon's on the case, dominating the game against Judith at the moment. Less than half a minute, Maria again, Rio. Oh, she's got to grips again, this time with Maria's leotard. Maria still down, Judith tries to come wide, but Falcon's always there when Judith doesn't need her. Maria, with the wind taken out of her sails by that last Rio tackle, but Powerball's tough to play and everyone knows it before they go on the pitch. Rio robbed her again, the ball's down and so's Maria. And Judith with a burst of speed, steals two points, just on the last knockings, good work from Judith, and that just about does it for an explosive 60 seconds, Maria will be disappointed. Inspired start from her, which sadly didn't set the pattern for the rest of the game. Judith, you certainly gave uh, Falcon a good run for your money. I try my best, pull me down every time nearly, managed to get one in at the end there. How tiring is it every time you get a hit? Very tiring. <laughs> Very tiring indeed. Maria, what a daunting task that was against uh, Rio. She nearly put my pants down. <laughs> Thanks, Rio. <laughs> <laughs> OK, let's bring in John Anderson with the scores, please. The Gladiators were on form there, keeping the score down. Judith, nevertheless, scored two points, but Maria scored three points. Woo! Let's give it up for Maria and Judith. The yellow tops are Romania's national football team colours. Oh, and there's Wolf's lunch. After two events, Judith is on six, Maria on five. Next, it's the men's event. Scoring with the blue balls, it's Neil. And scoring with the red balls, it's Levin. And they're facing our gladiators, Rhino and Hunter. Here come the heavy guns, the finest of the fine. Rhino and Hunter, a diabolical duo, enough to make any contender's blood run cold. Laverne facing Hunter. Laverne, 81 kilos, 12 stone, 10 pounds, which makes him three stone, four pounds lighter than the Hunter. Neil's opponent will be Rhino. Neil's 86 kilos against Rhino's 108 means Rhino's three and a half stones heavier. It's crunch time. Oh, Laverne with speed. Oh, great tackle from Hunter. Rhino at full stretch. Neil can't bask with his goods. Laverne again. Jimmy's Hunter. Oh, very nearly popped in a pair. Couldn't quite dump the donut. Quick recovery. Laverne superbly fit. Back for more. Wrestled down by Hunter. Neil with speed against Rhino. 2 nil to Neil. Less than 40 seconds remaining. Neil reloads straight back in, but so's Rhino. Laverne versus Hunter. Hunter wins it. Neil again. And Rhino gets to grips again, determined not to concede another two points to the contender. Laverne. Oh, desperate lob. Felled by Hunter, and Laverne seems to have hurt his back. Neil tries to lob Rhino, Laverne is still down. Hunter in attendance, offering consolation until medical attention arrives, and here it does, Dr Adrian Noon on the scene. Deborah, clearly concerned as we all are. Adrian Noon, highly qualified medic, the best man for the job. Here's how it happened, Laverne came wide, Hunter in with the tackle, Laverne goes down, back first, and hits the mat hard. Mike Garmston, the physio's there as well. Hunter giving his side of the story to the referee. And one of the people in white is Ken Warwick, the Gladiator's producer. He'll be calling the shots on this. Laverne is being eased into a sitting position while Adrian Noon sets about determining the problem. Laverne's mum, Barbara, waiting the diagnosis. Well, Laverne is up, albeit gingerly, with Ken Warwick making absolutely sure he wants to continue. Hunter applauds his courage. Laverne has elected to carry on. Well, he is an experienced physical trainer himself. Laverne saw the gap, went for it. Hunter closed the door, Laverne dropped the ball and found himself slammed back first onto the safety mat. Laverne in some discomfort. There are 17 seconds remaining. Let's see how it affects Three, his game. Two, Brave one. man, 17 seconds, Laverne nimble, but Hunter's there again. Big takedown from Hunter. Neil against Rhino, great tackle from the Gladiator, but that score won't count. Laverne again, loses the ball, gains a tackle from Hunter. Neil back with a blue, fends off Rhino, but loses his ball in the process. And time is running down. Laverne still up for it, one last desperate lob, but can't put a score on the board. Good work from the Glads against two exceptional opponents of Powerball.
Neil scored two. His last basket didn't count because nothing is scored once you've been floored. Laverne, that was certainly no easy power ball against Hunter. No, I, I got the most agile. I'm one of the fastest uh, gladiators uh, on the show for the power ball. It's going to be tough. I knew it would be quick. I couldn't shake him. Fair dues, I got to take my hat off to him. Well, it is off. <laughs> got to ask you, how's your back? Is your back OK? OK, yeah, it's cool. Well, that's one thing. You can continue with the show, which is great news. Neil, I think they watched you on the last show, man. The, the gladiators have got your mark now. Yeah, it was, that was good. I enjoyed that. It's tougher, but it was good. Thinking about signing Rhino up for the rugby league side? Yeah, he's a bit sharp, isn't he, for a big fella? <laughs> he certainly is. Let's bring in John Anderson for the scores. Well, these two contenders were outstanding, but regrettably for them, the gladiators were even better. Laverne, no points. Neil, two points. Let's give it up for Neil and Laverne. So as we head for the break, Laverne stays in the lead on 10. Neil moves up to six. We've just seen some fantastic action in Powerball. To see more, join us after the break here on Gladiators. Birmingham and to part two of our quarter-final where we're just about to kick off with our next event. Danger Zone. First up in Danger Zone, it's Judith! And she's going to be facing Lightning! Over to John Anderson. Judith Hot puts it into the danger zone, Lightning gunning for her, the bullseye above Lightning is the target Judith's aiming for with the crossbow, worth 10 points, lets it fly but way offline, should Lightning strike Judith with a ball, the game's over. The Mortar. Heavy Mortar fire from Judith, finds a range now, needs to break cover before the station blows, Rocket Launcher is next. Oh, let's rip and rattles the windows, Lightning re the mechanism, Judith to the bazooka. Ames. Full short. Well, now it's the dash from the tunnel to strike the lower target. That'll be worth five. She finishes the tunnel crawl, lights up the lower roundel. And Judith's fans happy with that. Well, Judith, it looks as if you've still got a little bit of energy left, but it was quite a tough one. You hit the target almost on a couple of occasions. I knew it wasn't a very good shot. You say, last time I tried to hit something, I blew a hole in the garden. I missed the target completely. Well, you were nearly there, but not quite, but you managed to get through the tunnel, so you picked up five points. Well done, Judith. Husband Andrew and Dad William, glad she's unscathed. Next up to face lightning, it's Maria! Over to John Maria at a disadvantage being drawn second. Lightning's got her eye in now. Maria will get a point for every weapon she gets to grips with, even if she fails to hit the target. Crossbow. Off target. Oh, but I think she's taken a hit. The ref's blown up. Well, Lightning's in no doubt. Still some confusion. Let's see it again. Maria is crouched behind the station's perspex, but Lightning whops one in between the gap to strike Maria's leg. Incredible shot shooting from Lightning. So Judith adds five to a total. Maria won 11 6 the score. So we now move into the men's event with Laverne. And he's going to be facing Ace. Laverne's ready to rock. Here's how he sums up his experience on Gladiators. Yeah, you know the Gladiators think they're quick. You think they're bad, you think they're rough. But at the end of the day, I'm going to have to be bigger, badder, rougher, tougher, quicker, meaner, faster than any of you guys, suckers. <laughs> Vernon's in your area, kicking Carbascaria. Let's go, brother. Thank you, Puff Danny. Three, two, one. Like the girls, this is Laverne's first competition danger zone run. Hello, he's jumped on the crossbow, rendered it inoperable. That's a good start. Ace with the rapid rattle of tennis balls, homing in on his target. Laverne popping and weaving, he's so agile. No joy with the mortar, though. Next, it's the sprint for the rocket. Oh, Ace has bagged him. Shot to the leg, two points scored. Great marksmanship from Ace. And Laverne now protesting about the crossbow. His sister Michelle would like clarification. Meanwhile, here's the hit. Laverne stylishly hurdling Ace's volleys, but gets struck on the trailing ankle. Well, 
the burn. My first question is, well, it's quite obvious you were hit there, but what happened at the first station? Because you didn't fight. man. I went to pick it. Look, look, look at the, um, the arrow, man. It's out. I went to the bird to pick it up. It was, it was broke, man. That's got to be done. Something. So it wasn't set up properly. Well, the word is that you picked up two points. Oh, cool. Not entirely happy. There's plenty more events. All right. Well, you can hear Laverne's fans requesting a replay. So we'll oblige. Let's take a look at the evidence. Laverne leaps to evade 80 serve. Now watch the left foot. Crunch right on his equipment. Here's John Anderson to discuss it with Laverne's family. A good try, guys. A good try. Michelle, I've had a hard look at the video replay, and uh, I have to tell you that Laverne was so eager to get there, he jumped on the equipment, and as a result of jumping on the equipment, knocked it over. And guess whose fault that is? Laverne's. <laughs> It's tough, but there ain't no rerun. The equipment was fine all down to Laverne. Sorry about that, guys. John Anderson, never a person to use one sentence when a dozen will do. Next up against Ace, it's Neil. Over to John Anderson. Contender! With the crossbow now, sellotape together, it's Neil, the Wirral rugby star, looking to convert one of these weapons into a ten-point earning machine. Minds where he puts his feet, keeps the crossbow intact. Oh, Jess Short moves to his left and the safety of the second station. The mortar's in play. And Ace is aiming too high to trouble Neil. Neil's taking his time before letting it fly. Bang on, great shooting from Neil. The fireworks confirm the direct hit. Ace like a Guy Fawkes on bonfire night. Just dawned on Neil. Great flair from Neil and from our special effects department. <laughs> Millsy, Matty, and Katie celebrate. Well, Neil, I think we could quite safely say that after the second station, you hit the target, but you kept on firing. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure, but thought I had it just on the corner. Absolutely, that was terrific. Let's hear it for Neil. Ten points. A popular ten point win with Neil's fans because that puts him right back in after three events. Laverne's up to 12, Neil's up to 16. Catapult. Our first female contender on Catapult is Judith. Defending her goal is Bo. Our second female contender is Maria. Defending her goal is Lightning. Over to John Anderson. Contenders ready! And it goes ready! Three, two, one! Now, this might look as if they're just hanging about, but once they get some bounce in their bungees, the action will hot up. Just like that. The contenders have to hurl their respective coloured balls into the octagonal goals with the Glads assiduously defending. Maria in yellow, going for a third trip to the platform to try and seize the ball. Judith sizing up the goal mouth. Nice lob, hits the woodwork. The Glads having to anticipate every move. Maria up to replenish her stock. Judith too. Maria hits the post, as does Judith. Tremendous bad luck for both girls with the Glads off target. Judith comes down two-fisted. Maria against the bar. Judith, underarm. Good save from Vogue. Maria. Off target. Judith. Time running down. Both hands full. Scores two points for the goal. Fails to follow it up with the underarm. Maria trying to get herself worked up. Judith again. Open goal. Oh! Puts Vogue in the wrong place at the wrong time and punishes her for it. 4 0 to Judith at the time up hooter. The scores for Catapult. Maria unfortunately scored no points, but Judith scored four. <laughs> Let's hear from our gladiators, Lightning and Bow. Great work from Lightning. Really? Well, tell Daddy to get in the queue. After four events, Judith's up to 15, Maria's stuck on six. <laughs> Time now for our next event. Our first male contender is Laverne. And he's facing Wolf.
Well, you've never seen a Muppet built like this. 95 kilos heavy, that's 15 stone. Laverne's the same height, but 14 kilos or two stone, four pounds lighter, which could be crucial on sumo ball. Oh, it's certainly crucial on sumo ball. Laverne's out of there, fast finishing from Wolfman. And the Wolf lapping up the crowd's appreciation. He might as well, it doesn't happen often. When push came to shove, Laverne couldn't get going and Wolf shouldered his responsibilities. Our second male contender is Neil. And he's facing Vulcan. Well, despite his nervous tick, when it comes to winning, if anyone can, Vol can. And here's the evidence in his favour. 120 kilos, that's 18 stone, 12 pounds, which puts him at 34 kilos, or four and a half stones, advantage over Neil. Neil's straining, but you can't help thinking the odds, and they don't come odder than Vulcan, are stacked against him. Ten points for pushing Vulcan off, five for staying the distance, but Vulcan's got him already! Neil's girlfriend, Louise, slumps, resigned into her seat. The Vulcan's famous grimace there. Mercifully hidden by the sumo ball. Vulcan still only winding up for the big push, but Neil was already airborne. Clean sheets from the Glads means the scores stay the same. Laverne 12, Neil 16 after four events. <laughs> Judith's fans in full voice, the blow-up sheep shops done a roaring trade. What do you think of the singing? Not too bad. Mind you, some of those voices are enough to make your hair curl. First up to run the gauntlet, it's Judith! And tonight, she faces Rio! Vogue! Siren! Falcon! And Fox! Judith actually looks up for this, here's why. What I'm looking forward to least in the next round is actually gauntlet. Hitting Siren at the front is like hitting a wall. She does something else and try and get round her. She just keeps knocking you down. She really is a tough, strong girl. Judith will find Rio just as daunting. Rio ramrods Judith back to where she came from. Good work from Rio, delaying her early progress. Next, it's Vogue with the power pad. Spends her off. Judith being driven up the wall by Vogue. First one way, then the other. And Judith threw into her old foe, Siren. Judith scored ten points in Gordon last time, but Judith driving Siren back. Next, it'll be the Falcon. Less than ten seconds in counting. Falcon doubling away with the pads. Finally, it's Fox. This is going to be close. Judith backing her up just outside the time by my reckoning. Husband Andrew figures well, otherwise. Judith, if you can bear to pick yourself up. Oh, last event before the Eliminator. And I hear you saying there to Fox, she's tough. I think the chances of you getting past Rio, I thought were going to be minimal, but you just slunk past her. It's like hitting the wall. I was dead and sad and being at the front, but when she was in the middle, oh. Well, the word is, I believe, that you didn't get your body across the line before the whistle went. Oh. So I do believe you picked up <laughs> four points. So that's what you're going to have to go with. Add that to your 15 already. So let's hear it for Judith, not bad. Four points and a dozen bruises to show for that gauntlet. The end was very tight, so let's see it again. Fox trying to hold her back, but as you can see, the clock hits zero before Judith hits the checkered floor. Next up against our gladiators, it's Maria! Over to John Anderson. Contender ready! This should be a treat, because last time, well, when Maria tamed and shamed the glads into conceding ten points. First stop is Rio. Oh, uses Rio like a turnstile. Vogue is next, trying to put the skids on her. Oh, Maria, so fast and agile. Vogue gives up the ghost. Can Siren sort her out? No, she can't. Next, it's Vulcan. But Vulcan can't contain her. Finally, it's Fox. Fox stuns her, carries her away. But look at this superb gauntlet for Maria in 18.3 seconds. Makes the Glads eat a large portion of humble pie yet again. Flip them out 
of the way. I don't even know if we can find out perhaps in what time you did that, but that was very, very quick. You're in desperate need of some points before we go into the eliminator. You picked up 10 points. Thank you. I knew I was going to do this one. I was ready for this game. Let's hear for Maria. Well done. Well done being the understatement of the series so far. After five events, Judith goes to 19, Maria jumps to 16. So before we go into the men's event of Gauntlet, I understand, Laverne, you've got something to say. Yeah, I'm going to be uh, forfeit in the uh, game for Ga uh, Gauntlet. Um, I've hurt my back and uh, I don't want to antagonise the uh, injury any further, so I'm just taking it easy for now. You do realise with that that, of course, you're giving up the uh, possibility of picking up 10 points, 10 valuable points, before we go into the Eliminator. I do understand this, but at the end of the day, if I get hurt now, I'm finished with the Eliminator. So if I just keep it all, all my energy now for the Eliminator, I'll take it from there. All right, well, we look forward to seeing you at the beginning of the Eliminator, and we'll just have to watch and see how Neil gets on. Let's hear it for Laverne. Very wise words from Laverne, met with the approval of his training partner, Simon. So getting ready to run the gauntlet, it's Neil! And tonight, he faces Rhino! first sortie into the gauntlet and Rhino's the first obstacle Neil heaves him back onto Hunter's domain sustaining some heavy hits at the hand of Hunter Hunter drives his man to his knees and Carl drives him into the ground oh and smacks him for good measure the rest blowed up I wonder why you're not allowed to strike you push that's all you do not strike move move Hunter not quite seeing eye to eye with John Anderson. First time Hunter's ever got the thumbs down from the girls. There are 20 seconds remaining. Three, two, one. Ace is the third barrier to overcome. And overcome he has been. Now the Diesel will try and shunt him into the sidings. Oh, sensational agility from Neil. Vulcan is the final frontier. Less than 10 seconds. Can he pull it off? Oh, Vulcan's got the better of him. He can't get over that relentless battering. Oh, but Neil finds a way through. 1.4 on the clock and 10 points in the bank. Neil Parsley, an incredible time. Pandemonium in the Parsley field. Neil! Yes! That was absolutely fantastic. I have to ask you, though, what was going on with Hunter? Oh, I don't know. I was trying to get past him, didn't think about it. And then you had a little bit of trouble with Vulcan, but as we go into the Eliminator with the place in the semi-finals at stake, you picked up another 10 points. Well done! So after five exceptional events, Laverne goes into the Eliminator on 12, Neil on 26. Well, what a relief that's over, but of course there's worse to come with the Eliminator looming just around the corner. So join us after the break here on Gladiators. The Gladiators! to the National Indoor Arena here in Birmingham where it's eliminator time. Now in the women's event, Maria's on 16 points, Judith is on 19 points. That's a three point difference, giving Judith a one and a half second head start. At stake, a place in the semi-finals. Over to Jeremy. Judith, I mean, even I'm feeling nervous before this eliminator event. I mean, is one and a half seconds, is that enough for you? I'll need every second that I can because I know that Maria's going to be very fast. Maria, Judith says you're quick. Are you going to be quick enough to make up those one and a half seconds? Yeah, she's got to look over your shoulders all the time because I'm going to catch her. OK, let's wait and see. You're going to the start. I wish you both the best of luck and I'll see you at the finish. Well, there's a lot of nervous hand-wringing and a few bobs worth of jewellery in the arena as both sets of supporters Maria! gear themselves up. Maria! 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 Judith, you will go on my first whistle. Maria, you will go on my second whistle. Three, two, one. Judith Huntington versus Maria Ward for a place in the semi-finals. Maria's last eliminator timed at a minute 42.3, and Judith's timed at a minute 38.8, so Judith has the quicker advantage as well as a head start. But we've seen Maria's turn of speed in gauntlet, so this should go to the wire. 
the turn for the rope climb, and Maria is almost shoulder to shoulder with Judith. How will the ropes take their toll? Judith's family desperate for her to get her legs up. Maria's there for the short haul. Both girls limbo themselves onto the platform before the agonizing hand ladder. Judith in pink, Maria in yellow. Maria's fans know it's hers for the taking. And Maria touches down first. Death Valley swing. Judith's led a 1.5 second lead slip away. Next climb next. Judith's family can't believe it's happened. Maria climbing the net superbly. She'll make the summit with a goodly lead intact. Chris and Matt are giving it plenty. They've got to get up to get down, and they get down by the 20 mile an hour zip line stretch between the gantry and the arena floor. Maria splashes first, ahead of her the graveyard shift. Judith, good landing. She needs a mistake for Maria. She's going to pull this back. Maria to the seesaw. Matter with her every step of the way. Maria with one down and one more, plus the travelator to go. The fans are confident the semi final's hers. Here she comes for the second winner's medal of her career. She's there. Oh no, she's not. Yes, she is. Maria Ward stakes her claim to return and fight again. Oh, her fans pleased with that result. Judith powering up the travelator, financial advisor, farm worker, and mum. Now a heroine on gladiators. Maria, boy, do you deserve that medal. You're through to the semi final. Can you believe it? I can't believe it. I'm so tired. You're so tired. But, <laughs> I mean. I'm so, I'm so pleased. I knew I can do it. I knew I'm faster than Judy. And I beat her. She was very good. She, saw, she had a very good start. I was a bit disappointed. But I made it. I'm so pleased. Thank you for all my supporters. Thank you. Thank you, Greg. From Maria, another bonus that you've got a fantastic time. One minute, 31 seconds. That's incredible. I mean, that's nearly as quick as some of the boys. Yeah. I think my, this time was better than my first uh, time. I did 141. Uh, I made it, yeah! You certainly did. Let's give it up for Maria. Oh, Judith, I have to say that was such an exciting eliminator. It was head to head all the way virtually. I knew she'd be fast. At the end of the day, she was the better one, the eliminator, and that's what counts. But I've really, really enjoyed it. It's been an excellent time. It's an experience of a lifetime. It certainly has been great to have you on the show. I know you can go back now to your husband and to your family and uh, be proud of yourself because you've done a great job on here. But as you said, you win some and you lose some. Let's hear it for Judy! Judith Huntington, an inspiring character, exceptional sportswoman. For Maria, she's come a long way since those hard days in Romania. Husband John, the first to congratulate her on this terrific achievement. Emotional scenes all round. Judith makes for her husband Andrew a pillar of support throughout this competition, while Maria continues to celebrate that win. The good news continues. Her course time of 1.31.5 shatters the previous fastest eliminated time. Test Neil's 14-point lead will give him a seven-second advantage at the start. Well, Laverne, I sincerely hope for your sake that you're not going to regret having forfeited the uh, gauntlet. Well, I believe I'm very quick on the eliminator, so uh, I'm still going to be chasing uh, Neil all the way down. He's going to have to go damn fast to beat me, and uh, I'm going to be chasing him all the way. Don't worry. And you know, Neil, that even with seven seconds, you can't afford to relax for one split second. No, I can't be messing around. It's there for the taking, though, so I'm going for it. All right, the very best of luck to the two of you. We'll see you both at the end. Over to John Anderson. Neil, you will go on my first whistle. Laverne, you will go on my second whistle. Three, two... One. Neil Parsley, the pro rugby star from the Wirral, sets off, takes the high and low hurdles with ease on his way to the net, knowing that Laverne Rich, our fitness instructor from Wales, is well on his way and has the speed to break down that lead. Oh, but Neil caught badly in the spider's webbing of the nets. Laverne superbly quick, Simon and Debbie willing him on. Neil up the rope first as Laverne cuts into that lead. It's the heave to the platform, a formality for Laverne as Neil powers the handbike. Neil finishes his biking as Laverne starts, knows there's still time to catch Neil between here and the travelator. Neil to the net. 
Laverne stalling on the bike. This is least favourite, Michel in agony as Laverne struggles to finish the last few feet of bike track. Neil is hardly a great net man as we've seen already, so not all is lost for Laverne. Neil to the gantry, can't afford a mistake now. Laverne's speed on these climbs is remarkable. Neil to the zip, braced for that splashdown. Good landing. Mom and Dad, Dawn and Joe can sense victory. Laverne to the zip line. He'll see Neil on the first seesaw. Coming in, good landing. Simon and Debbie know he's still in with a shot. Neil, second seesaw. Oh, but he needs to start again. This is Laverne's chance. Laverne will seize it with both hands and fast feet. No, he's blown his chance. Neil to the travelator. Storms to the top. Neil Parsley from the Wirral, a semi-finalist on Gladiators. Relief from Louise, Matty and Katie. Straight, come on, I see some fire. I see you deliver. John Anderson asking for fire. Here comes Laverne to finish it off. Superb display of strength and agility. Gets the job done. Excellent performance. Now he had a seven second lead. I think that was always going to be enough, but when Laverne. I mean, he caught up with you by the, by the balance beams. Oh. I mean, come on, what were you honestly thinking going out that. Uh... I was just thinking. I was just thinking, come on, don't rush it. We've got it. <laughs> tried to concentrate. <laughs> Can't believe it. <laughs> I'd just like to say thanks to all my family. Everyone from Cheshire Oaks. Thank you, Shillings. Rugby League. My girlfriend, Louise. I love everyone. <laughs> Everyone's been marvellous, but you've been particularly great. You've just gone round there in 1 minute 23 seconds. You're through to the semi-finals. We're going to see you again. Oh. Let's give it up for Neil Parsley. <laughs> to discuss the gauntlet or not but obviously the seven seconds was a tough one to catch up you were nearly there at times yeah like my biggest downfall is a handbike always has always will be that's one mean hard piece of machinery which i haven't got my quite mastered but i've had a fantastic time i gotta say my fans my family my friends top bananas <laughs> they are the brilliant fans from wales <laughs> They certainly have been great, and it's been great to have you on the show. You've been full of enthusiasm, and unfortunately, this is where Gladiators ends for you. But we'll uh, take this opportunity to wish you the very best of luck for the future. Let's hear it for Laverne! Remember, everyone who earns a place on Gladiators is a winner. Louis, Laverne's dad, leads the applause. Neil's with his family and supporters. They've got to come back again for the semi-final. Mom and Dad congratulate him. Louise's girlfriend, jubilant scenes. For Laverne, it's the long walk to meet his supporters. And Deborah has led them all night with style and a smile. And now, she gets her just desserts and, of course, the flowers. In the men's fastest eliminator contest, Neil's time was way outside the existing record of 1 minute 14.2. Well, it's good news. We're going to see more of Neil and Maria. Absolutely, but we still have one more quarterfinal to get through, so join us for that next week here on Gladiators. Good night. For safety reasons, do not attempt to recreate any of the events you have seen on Gladiators. Do it.